Yes, um, it looks like you're trying to build this distributed web very high up on the application layer. Like you're using... Yes. Well, did you... Like, what's your take on, on ICN, information-centric networking? Like those guys who try to get um, information closer to the user, like on below TCP, actually? Um, I don't know much about it. <laughs> okay, let's talk about it later. Okay, <laughs> yes, yeah. let's. I, what I'm finding is there's lots of people that are doing different parts of this whole puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we should just deal with it as a big open source project. What, I, what I'm hoping to do through this is to try to get, and, and, so, and hence the, the sort of top level nature of this talk, mm -hmm. was, to, was actually arguing with the, talking with um, funders, the, Ford found, the presidents of the Ford Foundation, MacArthur Foundation, Mozilla Foundation, Open Science Foundation, to go and back the idea of building a distributed web as a human rights issue. Mm -hmm. That as a response to Snowden, societally, we've got a problem. And so this was to try to say, what's the goal? What would be the, uh, and, but boy, are there a lot of pieces to do. For instance, the, um, the distributed identity component, no idea, really. Um, I'm hoping that we can get this together. And I hear there's something coming up at the, uh, uh, the Computer History Museum. When is that coming up? Terrific. So if we can get a distributed identity system that doesn't suck, um, then we, uh, we we can actually use that to build on top of the name coin type thing. Maybe it's you know Ethereum is also a contender in this. And these are just the things that I know of. MadeSafe is another technology that's really trying to do things at a very low level. So any other questions? I mean, there's a couple of questions like, how do you deal with the fact that any of the companies listed there are funded by venture capital and are being driven by profit motives that got us to where we are today? And an, an example being like RSS is disappearing. Twitter Turner sets off Medium doesn't even have RSS, which is like the blogging platform Ed Williams developed after you know, it's totally linked in with Twitter and we can have systems that seem open and then they get enclosed again because the commons doesn't make money in the same way that private equity wants it right. to and captures it. I, as much as we've seen openness and um, venture funded business um, actually do well together in some circumstances, we've got a lot of failure modes of that whole model as well. I'm a big fan of nonprofits um, for doing things like infrastructure um, type builds, mm -hmm. um, but also still having competition even at that level. Um, so I think of infrastructure should be nonprofit and competitive. Um, but a lot of these technical components um, could be done by those that are clever enough to figure out a business model uh, around them. But let's make sure that it's open source so it can be moved around so we own our own uh, infrastructure. Uh, at the end of the day, because companies come and go. Um, but the idea of trying to build a permanent web um, that is a distributed web should be kind of all of our concern to do well. Yes? Can you describe a little bit more uh, your vision of the distributed WordPress or blog equivalent? Yes. Uh, what I can't quite understand is whether it's something that's always on. You control it if it's always on or it's only on when you want it to be or you're located somewhere? Good, good question. How I'd uh, imagine a, 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 a word, distributed WordPress blog platform is you could just start writing it on your computer. You'd hit publish when it's time and that would then make it so that other people that wanted to see it could. Would anybody? Well, <laughs> if nobody does, then it's never going to find its way off of your computer. But in this peer-to-peer, -peer, all of the readers of the web become the creators and the infrastructure of the web itself. So your other readers would start to go and make copies of your uh, blog and store them and serve them to others. So when your computer goes off or you retire or die or your computer crashes or whatever, it's still out there and running. But you say, well, doesn't that sort of make it unreliable, kind of the way BitTorrent works? If nobody's seeding, then it's a problem. This is where the Internet Archive comes in. We have a business model built around making cultural artifacts permanently available on the net. 
That's what we do. And that's what a whole, there's 12 billion dollars of, of libraries in the United States per year. That's their goal too. They're mostly doing paper at the moment, but they're trying to figure out how to move forward. If we had a mechanism of going and distributing this responsibility of keeping your blog up and running, it turns out it doesn't cost that much. Especially if the bandwidth fees, if it gets really popular, are spread out. The storage itself is quite inexpensive. The Internet Archive is 20 petabytes of data, 50 petabytes of spinning disks, and we're tiny. And all of that is possible uh, to do. So I think we can make things snappy and reliable and be a word as easy to use as going to WordPress.com and setting up a blog uh, and getting things uh, going. So, so, or so even the Facebook. You, so the issue you're trying to solve is, is ownership plus you don't want any one central point being, let's say, WordPress.com going out of business or shutting you down, whatever. It's just the idea that everyone has a copy, or the, sorry, there are multiple copies, and thus there's no one single point of failure in losing this information. Is you just gave my talk in one sentence. I'm trying to figure you're out what you're you're <laughs> absolutely, you 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 distilled it down. Okay. That um, the idea is to make it, we're finding that there are more and more communities that don't have institutional backing. Got it. So the idea of having somebody own a server such that they control whether that's, that site is ever up or down makes no sense to them. It used to make sense when banks were just trying to get online, they needed their own website. They were tied to a physical entity. But we're seeing more and more entities not have that type of ownership structure. And so can we build technologies for those that don't have to have a person or a company um, be the host of their uh, materials. So it can be permanently uh, reliably available, privately accessible, um, and uh, still fun as hell to play with. Yeah? Do you see anyone handling the privacy aspect of, of this very well? Uh, reader privacy is probably the biggest challenge in this. Um, writer privacy is actually something we could probably achieve pretty well. Writer privacy, like the common sense, the, the pamphlet that helped stir the American Revolution, that was published anonymously. Um, we now know it's Thomas Paine, but uh, that wasn't known then. Um, well, we've completely taken reader privacy for granted. That the idea that you could pick up a book or you can go to a library, it's not going to get spied on, um, that is sort of taken for granted. How to do that in, the, in this world is a little un, uncertain. But having multiple copies around help it a lot. Or going and making it so that there's, uh, there's not an easy place to go and park yourself in front of the WikiLeaks site and see who comes to it. That it's innately distributed, that helps. Is it enough? Probably not. But I'd say that's the goal. And what are some of the technologies, the tours, uh, the types of things that we can go and build into our infrastructure to make it so that we can have reader privacy that is something if you put in a library context, people in power or gray hair all understand why you'd want to protect reader privacy. The history of rounding up people for what it is that they've read and having bad things happen to those people is something that is not in our long or short term memory. It's, it's something we have to architect around. And unfortunately, the current web is um, a problem. Uh, so the one issue that um, we're really addressing is openness at the expense of replication. So if someone says, I want to absolutely disappear off the web now, all my writing, all his or her writing will have to be distributed. Yes, and that's true. <laughs> this, this idea of a, you can go and put a new version up, but the idea of taking away all past versions, at least this idea, makes that quite difficult. Um, so yes, that is a, uh, um, an upside or a downside, the way that you look at it. Published is, is fairly permanent. Anything else? So anyway, with, with, if this is something that, that sort of is along the lines of things that you've been thinking about or want to help with, great. Or if there are things the Internet Archive can help your project with that are along in these areas, I think we need to build uh, another generation of, of this. Do you want to invite them? Oh, yes, thank you. 
Um, today at the end of this uh, meeting at six o'clock, there's a reception at the Internet Archive. It's open to us and the public. Um, and there's food for 100 people, so please come. Um, and so six o'clock, I think there'll be drinks and you know, hors d'oeuvre like things. I don't think of it as a, as a real full on dinner. There is a uh, place right around the corner that uh, serves sushi and takes Bitcoin, which I love because uh, we've, been, we've been paying our employees with Bitcoin. And uh, so there's a lot of Bitcoin floating. Oh, oh, and Green Apple Books, which is half a block down, and I also take Bitcoin. But anyway, so the sushi place, I think they're, they're gonna stay open for us, uh, for people that want to have uh, Bitcoin-based sushi. Of course, they take a dollar too. <laughs> the Bitcoin is 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 uh, it's the, the, the ones and zeros are probably there somewhere. Um, so and the Internet Archive is at 300 Funston Street. So it is I don't know probably a 20 minute walk from here. So I think yeah. there's going to be a little bit of a but it's it's through the park and it's it's just beautiful and we've got this cool building with how, how many people have been to the Internet? How many people have not been to the Internet Archive? Okay, go, okay, you gotta come, you gotta come. Uh, and, and we gave a good demo, and the place is awesome, and you can see our petabytes actually blinking away. Um, so please, uh, so, so please. So come. Bruce, is Mark going to be speaking tonight, too? Nice. I think so. I think there's going to be uh, some speakers, and there's, yeah, so and there's wine. So, so Mark, is, <laughs> Mark is going to be speaking here tonight, too, and you'll be talking also, right? I'll, I'll, I'll welcome people. And you're giving kind of a tour, maybe. Yes, I'll give it. I'll give a tour, and yeah, please come and let's let's come together around this because I think actually one of your points is really key. Is this is going to be a very difficult thing to get venture funding for? Um, this really has to be a community project by us for us. There will be people who figure out how to make money out of all this, but I think at this point it's going to be us trying to do the right thing. Um, and maybe we'll get foundation support because really the infrastructure levels tend to be, if they're done right, they're more like how Tim Berners-Lee did it. It's, it's not something you, you uh, pay to play. It's something open uh, to all. So I think it's gonna require us to come together. The fortunate thing out of building a distributed web, all the pieces are there. We can actually get this to happen. So thank you, and I'm around all day. Thank you.